from Southern River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, I look into sports, wellness, and fitness. Today, we continue our look at high school football in the Cooley region with uh, head coach Tony Service, Lacrosse Central, along with Alec Morris and David Hayden. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank, yeah, thank you. Well, training camp is kind of winding down, Coach, um, as you prepare for your opening game uh, against uh, Eau Claire. Eau Claire, um, the Huskies from North. So let's kind of reflect back on training camp and talk about some of the highlights, and maybe even look at your scrimmage, which you had last sure. week. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I think we're off to a great start. Uh, we've got a lot of returners this year, which, which certainly helps. We've got a lot of experience coming back. Uh, we had some holes that we had to fill in, but overall I've been really pleased with what we've done. I wish our numbers were a little bit higher. Uh, you know, our sophomore class is, is a class that we're kind of missing missing some kids, but you know, our junior and senior classes are two strong classes back to back. So I'm really looking forward to things. Uh, we had a nice scrimmage. I thought we played probably our best defensive football in a scrimmage this early on in, in quite some time, at least three or four years. Uh, so that was good to see. And offensively, there's some things that we need to still work on, but I think we'll get there. So let's, let's look a little bit at the training camp and look at uh, the things about starting the season. For example, a lot of coaches believe that we, we, the season starts too, too early, uh, first of August. Uh, it hurts the numbers uh, declining throughout the country, the numbers in high school football. What's your thoughts on that? I would agree. I, I think, uh, you know, baseball, basketball, soccer, all those sports have year-round activities right now and, and hockey as well. And they usually go all the way up to, to the end of July. And there's really no time for, for football players to get a, a chance to get a break. Uh, they start right away. We had to start July 31st this year because we play a Thursday night game, which is the earliest we've ever started. I mean, we never in July before. Uh, I think just having one week off there would certainly help numbers. And I think it would help the morale of the kids. Now, our kids have been awesome. Uh, they've done a great job battling through. I know we've got several kids that are multi-sport athletes. Uh, that are participating all the way up to the end of July, but I think they're doing a, a great job with, with battling through that, but I think it would certainly help if we could start a week later. Well, Alec Morris, first time on the show, and yeah. uh, a, a senior, so a, a lot of people in, in that offense and defensive line looking at you as a leader, two-year starter, uh, reflecting on you coming back again, uh, training camp. What are your thoughts on how you've progressed so far? Well, this year uh, was a little different coming back as a senior. I knew I had to be, I had to step it up as a leader. Um, the line coming back, I'm really excited to see what we can do with the number of returning starters and then the number of really juniors stepping up. So, but you've prepared yourself with yeah. powerlifting. I mean, and you went to some camps. So, uh, you would, starting training camp, you were ready physically and mentally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over the summer, I went to like three or four college camps just to prepare myself and put myself out there for college coaches. I think I over this summer I've gotten so much better just because of the camps, and I'm really ready for this year. David Hayden, a guy I've known for many, many years, <laughs> coming through the club along with Alec. And uh, yep. training camp for you, were, were you ready? Yeah, I was ready. I mean, I, I fit into the category of people that. Uh, Played. I mean, I played basketball until the end of July, so I, I didn't get much of a break. But I mean, I think that helped me get more in shape for the start of training camp, which is definitely tough. But I think I was ready for it. Physically, you're both ready. Sometimes mentally, uh, players struggle. What do you do during the uh, the summer months mentally to prepare yourself for training camp and the season? David, anything in particular? Uh, well, I mean, you just gotta, as an athlete, w one thing you got to do is you got to build up that mental toughness to be able to cope with all these, like, with not a lot of break and doing a lot of hard, hard sports in the summer. But I mean, that's what you got to do. Coach, you know, the philosophy of training camp has changed over the years in terms of when you played, when I played, when, uh, when I coached. Uh, uh, there was a little bit more... Um, uh, contact now, uh, of course, with the rules uh, which are starting at the NFL down to college and high school and youth, it's less uh, contact. And and then recently there's been some re uh, press releases and some situations in Maryland and previously it was at Texas Tech about maybe the style of coaching, how brutal some of it is, and that uh, now there's a, a, a there's a change throughout the country and it, it's even this week it's even more obvious that uh, some of the previous styles no longer acceptable. 
Yeah, and, and, and that's a good thing. I, I mean, it, I think we have to treat the kids with respect, the athletes with respect, uh, if, they, if we want to get it back as coaches, too. And, uh, you know, our, our, our philosophy as, as a staff is always to uh, make sure that the kids are healthy enough to play games. I mean, that's, that's kind of the big thing. Push them to, to where they can, uh, but make sure that we, they're playing Friday nights, which is what they want to do. So, you know, we're really cautious anytime a guy's got an injury. Uh, we, we make sure that we take him out, we check him over, and there might be times where he only practices with the helmet the rest of that day or something like that, too. So, uh, you know, if it's a leg injury or something like that, so that we can make sure that those guys are participating. What about players that maybe uh, you, you notice as a staff, as a team, that maybe are underperforming? Their efforts are questionable. And you know that there's a lot more gas in the tank, and yet. Uh, they're not producing, and uh, there there may be a multiple complex issues going on with that athlete. What do you do? Well, I think there's a lot of. I think there's a, first of all, you got to know your athletes. I think that's that's the first thing is you got to get to know them. Uh, and I think each each individual case you have to take case by case because not everybody reacts to the same type of motivation. Uh, sometimes you can just pull a kid aside and say, hey, you're not you're not you're not performing the way you need to, and that will get them motivated. Some kids need to be yelled at a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously in the in the right moment, but there's certain kids that you can't yell at. They they, they shut down. They they just they're not they're they're inefficient after that. So it's one of those things that you just have to know the kid. And I think by having a close knit group, which I think we really have this year, I think our kids are, are a lot closer than what they have been in the past. Uh, and I think the coaches understand the kids a lot better too, because it's, it's so many kids returning from the past years. Uh, that I, th I think we have a pretty good relationship with the, with the athletes and I think vice versa with the athletes and the coaches. You know, I noticed that culture in basketball. Of course, uh, uh, a lot of our viewers know that you're also a basketball coach, uh, Todd Ferguson's assistant, and the culture there is one of family. And have you, have you taken some of those sort of components to strengthen your own football team? Oh, oh absolutely. Uh, you know, we, he's got core values that he talks about uh, every day. So do we in football. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar. Uh, we, always, we always talk about family. Uh, breaking the huddle at the end of the day, we'll, we'll still say family on three. We still do a lot of the same things. Uh, and, you know, just the other day after one of our practices, we just went through and talked about how, if we really want to be good, how important that family structure is and that everybody leans on each other and cares for each other. Because uh, that's really the best teams is when you have that. Absolutely. Well, Alec, um, from a player's viewpoint, for our viewers, explain the Central Red Raider football culture from a player's perspective. <laughs> Uh, the culture's really changed from last year, in the past couple years to this year. past couple years it was really negative all the time. But with this year right now, the seniors have kind of focused on making it a real positive culture, making like, everybody feel welcome into the team. It, we're trying to get rid of the whole click scene, you know, where you have circles of people just talking to each other and there's circles, there's small groups of kids. We're trying to make everybody come together as one sort of group. Well, well said, Alec. Very well said. Of course, David Tua, senior, returning starter. Yep. We talked. We're going to talk about basketball, but I mean, you you certainly uh, are a gifted basketball player too. Thank you. The um, and and of course, being a Central Red Raider athlete, uh, an athlete at any play, at any level, uh, is a you're on a platform. It's a gift. You've been given a gift, and it's your job to showcase that gift in the right way. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Uh, I think the big thing uh, for showcasing is just never back down from any challenges. You always got to attack the challenges that are brought before you. I mean, th there's big games or some people get nervous for you. Just got to battle through that and show the people what you got and show your coaches. And and do and you do that knowing you because uh, I've seen you when you were young and you've always showcased that in a proper way. Uh, how about players that maybe you're a senior now uh, and your job is to be be an assistant coach on the field um, in terms of knowing what's going on with the culture. What about players that maybe are not f following the expectations of the, of the coaches? How do you handle that? Well, it, one thing, I mean, we're talking about how we're becoming a, a closer-knit family, and one thing that comes like as a side effect is that is that we can hold each other accountable more. So if and we have, I mean, we all know each other and we're all good friends with each other, so we can hold each other accountable to bring them to the right level. 
When I look at last year's season, Coach, I, uh, I would break it down into three components, and there's probably a lot more. But the first one I would say would be early in the season when you had the injury to Jordan Davis. And that impacted your season. You ended up 5-5. Five and five. You had a great season. But that was uh, one of the defining moments early in the season. Yeah, it was, a, it was a big injury. I think he played seven offensive plays, and in those seven offensive plays, I think he had three three catches and 85 80, yards yeah, and a touchdown. touchdown. And so, you know, not having him the rest of the year, and there was always hope that maybe he could be back by the end of the year. Uh, it just got to the point as a sophomore, I wanted him completely <laughs> healthy before he stepped on the field. But if he was a senior, he might have been trying to play the last the last couple weeks. But, uh, you know, that was, that was a big loss at the beginning of the year. Uh, and, in fact, we lost the next three games, I think, because of that and trying to make the adjustments. Uh, and then we kind of got things going, uh, had a couple of nice wins in a row there, and that certainly propelled us the rest of the year. And the second defining moment, I thought, it last, for last year's Central Florida Raider team was beating Logan, at Logan, 24-18. to 18. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, was, it was a great win for our kids, great win for our school and, and, and uh, South Side. Uh, we, we, we haven't fared very well against them uh, in my tenure. I think that's our second win against them. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that we have as a, on our goal sheet every year is, is to beat win the Logan. city and beat Logan. I mean, that's because they have had such a great program, and that's where, where we want to be as well for the football team. And the third component, I thought, was a, a, a defining part of your 2017 5-5 five and five seat record was making the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it was, it was two years, I think, uh, in between two or three years in between playoff appearances. Uh, unfortunately, we got Menominee the first game, but it was good to get back in there. Uh, it gave these guys we have returning a, a chance to feel what playoff football is like, uh, and I think uh, they're excited to try to get more of it this year and, and advance farther in the, in the playoffs. Good. Well, we're going to step aside just for a minute. We come back more with Central Red Raider football. We'll be right back. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled a championship team who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For Gold Star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is our business. Welcome back to Seven River Sports again today. We continue our look at high school football with the Central Red Raiders head coach Tony Service and two seniors, Alec Morris and David Hayden. Well, coach, teacher, coach. Teacher first, coach second. This is the eighth time you've been on the show, by the way. But you are beginning, you've launched a new approach to, to uh, the curriculum uh, at Central, and that's the uh, leadership and character development yes. component yeah. to uh, your to your teaching assignment. Yeah, it, I'm really excited about that. I started that last year, and we had actually I think David signed up this year, so I have David in class in that class. But uh, I'm really excited for it. It's something. It's a servant leadership class. It's run through the Character Lives uh, group that's here in the Cooley region. Uh, I think it was introduced to 21 schools last year in the area, and we're actually going forward and even putting it more into our curriculum uh, with our resource period is going to start running, running some of the same lessons that I teach or similar lessons that I teach in the semester long class. But I've seen huge, uh, huge gains from, from the students have taken it. Uh, my own son has taken it. And you know he, he's a great kid before he even came into the class. I think he's even better now. Uh, and it makes kids learn a lot about themselves and it actually gives them practice on how to do the things the right way. You talked about your son. Well, I know, you, being a friend, I know your family real well, but your son Jacob is senior, and uh, we talked before we went on the air on the show about uh, the summer you followed Quinn on, on a national track meet. Talk a little bit about your family. Yeah, I've got, I've got three boys, and so it's a unique household. Sometimes, uh, you know, my wife has to put up with, with balls bouncing around in the house and things like that, but she's, she's, she's really a great support. I'll start with her, Jen. She, She's always there for me. Uh, whenever I need to pick me up, she's always there for that. Uh, and she's, as a coach's wife, for two sports, I'm gone a lot, and so she has a lot on her plate, but uh, she really supports the family a ton. Uh, Jacob, my senior, is uh, doing really well, a very good student, uh, very hard worker, uh, really technique-wise, he's really solid. He rarely makes mistakes out on the field at outside linebacker. Uh, always gives it his all, uh, team first type guy. So I, I'm really proud of him. Uh, you know, he's looking at colleges right now. He has some college visits and things of that nature this summer. So I think he's getting excited about college. 
Uh, my middle son, Quinn, uh, he's an incoming freshman this year, and his favorite sport is probably track and field, and, and he went to a national track meet in North Carolina and was in the pentathlon, uh, so he qualified for that and, and ran against some great, great runners there, the 200 hurdles, the 200 uh, high jump and triple jump. So he had, he had four days of competing down there in a national track meet, which uh, is something he's going to cherish uh, forever. And then I've got a fourth grader, Gabe, who's in the Boys and Girls Club tackle football yeah, program. Yeah, I know so. Gabe too. I know your family real well. And, uh, and of course, uh, Alec, first time I've met you, but your family is, is big uh, in terms of supporting you in both academics and athletics. That's a pretty powerful thing to have behind you. Yeah. Uh, my family does a lot for me, like, like you said, in both athletics and sports. They're always at my games. They're always coming to taking me places for sports and college visits and everything and I can always count on them like like this sounds weird but to, like leave me alone when I'm doing homework you know you got to have silence and everything so I, I like them. Well you have great leadership skills is is that you're involved in your church too in yeah. terms of leadership talk about that. Well through my church we have this shoot, uh, church youth group where we get together and do community service and stuff like that through the church. I'm the vice president of that group, so I like I organize a lot of the volunteering stuff, and we go out, just go out as a group, and just go help the community. And every once in a while, we'll go bowling and have some fun. Good for so. you. It's a strong part of who you are. I know David. Of course, we <laughs> talked early on, but I know your mom and dad, your two sisters, your your brother. Uh, mm. They've been on the show, and uh, you're the youngest, following uh, some pretty uh, lofty. Um, uh, accomplishments that your your brother and your sisters have had. Right. Yeah. I mean, my family, they, being the youngest, they I've they gave me a lot of uh, advice. They they've been through it. They're all in college right now. I'm, I'm the only one in the house. But that I mean, whenever I have problems or whenever I need advice for something, they're always there. My siblings and my parents. I mean, they know a lot about parenting now too because I'm their fourth kid and they they've been through it before. So. Well, your brother uh, had an outstanding career at Central, and we had him on the show and, and uh, worked a lot of games. And then he went on to Madison, mm -hmm. and uh, he's somebody you look up to, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I, my brother, he, I just always, whenever he was in uh, high school, I, I just always admired like how he worked hard. He was always the like coaches always talk, always talk about him for football and basketball about how, how his class, especially they're always hardworking. They got the job done. And Alex is kind of at the forefront of that. He always worked hard. He was in the WBCA All-Star game in, for basketball. I mean, he was not the best athlete, but he just put in the time after his, like, freshman year. And, and I mean, that's where he got out of it. Well, he, he was a consummate uh, overachiever, no question about it. Yep. And when we broadcast Central Revator basketball games, I made the comment many times that the most underappreciated player, in my view, on Central's uh, Red Raider championship basketball teams was you, David Hayden? What's your thought on that? Well, we have, we have a lot of we have a lot of talent at at Central Basketball. I mean, we have four guys that could potentially play college basketball, maybe more, and uh, three guys that currently have D1 offers. And so, it's as I said, it's like a challenge, like being playing with them and having having like a we kind of have a target on our back for, at Central. We I mean, we're a big team and people want to get us, but. I mean, I, I never, I try not to back down from that, and I try to show off, show my skills, and yeah. I'm sure you do. Well, there's another team of lacrosse called the Logan Rangers. I'm pretty familiar with that team, <laughs> and uh, they'll be out to get you this year too. But uh, that that just uh, raises the uh, level of competition that uh, you get better when you face tough teams, and uh, in football and in any sport. Coach, let's look at the season. Uh, as we take the, this show here, uh, you, this is your opening week. You play at Eau Claire North, followed by Memorial Home. And let's talk about those two non-conference opponents and then the MVC race. Yeah, you know, I, I always look forward to playing Eau Claire schools. You know, I, I, I know they're not conference games, but it really does get, get us prepared for, for our conference season, uh, playing bigger schools. And, uh, you know, they, they both provide a, a different challenge. Uh, you know, Eau Claire North we used to be a lot more spread now. They have a new coach this year, so so we'll kind of see what they what they do differently this year. But uh, Eau Claire Memorial was a lot of smash mouth kind of in your face. Now they've opened it up a little bit the last couple of years, but I think they'll go back to they have a nice running back that's coming back. 
So kind of looking forward to things that they can do. And then we jump in the conference season right away with, with, with one of the favorites in, in home, and that's going to be a, a big-time challenge for us in a, in a unique offense. So we won't, we won't see that from either the same offense from home that we do from Memorial or North. So it'll be a, a nice challenge for us and a difficult start for us. But we, we have to have a better start than we did last year. Last year we started 1-3. and three. Uh, we can't have that type of start this year if we want to contend for any type of conference title. Last year you averaged 26 points a game. But you gave up 31 points yeah. a game. I mean, there were some games where you scored into the 40s, but then you allowed a, a lot of points, yeah. too. Thoughts on that this year? Uh, we certainly have placed a lot of emphasis on our defense. We've made some changes there. I think, uh, like, it's, like I was saying about the scrimmage, I think our, our defense probably played the best it has and at that early in the season in probably the last three or four years. So I'm counting big things from them. One of the things they have to do is they have to force more turnovers. They have to get more stops. Uh, they have to get some three and outs, you know, help us with field position. I, I, I feel that we, we have enough guys coming back. I, I think our defensive line is playing really well right now. I think our secondary has played really well. You know, the linebackers, we got to figure some things out there. But I think even, even those guys played really aggressively in the scrimmage. So I'm really excited about that group that we have this year on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, I'm sure you're excited too, Alec. But let's get to know you up close and personal too. But let's uh, fast forward to your graduating uh, at the end of uh, 2000, 2019, and then what's gonna? Where's Alec gonna go? Well, as of right now, <laughs> I'm kind of back and forth between what I want to do in college. You see, I want to be an engineer from like sophomore on, but then just recently I've been thinking well, I want to do like be like a football coach, like a college coach. So two completely different things. <laughs> so um, right now I'm looking at I want to play football in college. I've been talking to some colleges and going on visits and going to camps and everything, and it's looking pretty good. And you're preparing yourself for college because you're an academic standout too. Favorite subject? The science. Science. Yeah. Favorite teacher? Oh, God. <laughs> From the past. Math. Did you have public <laughs> service for a teacher? I did. I'm not a real big fan of math. <laughs> <laughs> that's engineering, though, Alex. That's, that's where I'm like, that's why I'm, that's hey. why I'm back and forth between engineering and... <laughs> Alec, I'm not a big fan of math either, so I struggled with math, but... Uh, there are other subjects that you can uh, certainly embrace. Um, role models, who's inspired you? Well, my dad. My dad's a big one. He's always showed me the right way, what to do. He's basically like, well, obviously he's my parent. He made me who I am today. So he's one, he's one person I really look up to. And the other one is my coach, Ryan Bott. He went to college to play football. And now he's back at our school doing what he loves to do, coaching the sport of football. And showing everybody how to be the best person they can be. Like he's our also our weightlifting coach, our powerlifting coach. So he's always like <coughs> I'm always like talking to him and everything. Define leadership for our viewers. Leadership to me is like taking more of your share of the like the blame and less of your share of the credit, you know? Philosophy of life. Well, my philosophy of life is um, when lightning strikes, you gotta when you go up, fall down, you gotta get back up and be the crazy enough, be crazy enough to say, "Bring it again! I want another try." Has lightning ever knocked you down? Well, lightning itself, but not lightning itself is not, but like it's a metaphor. Figure, yeah, you've I, been knocked down. Yeah, have you ever been knocked down? I've been knocked down. How'd you get up? Uh, battle back. And give, give us an example of that. Can you remember? Well, uh, for for basketball, at least last year we uh, we lost to On Alaska at their place. Was, we didn't play very good, and that that was a tough game. That certainly knocked us down. But I felt like throughout the season we kept battling back. I mean, we eventually we beat them two times after that, and then we made it to state. So that's an example of. Being knocked on philosophy the back. of life for David Hayden, what would that be? Well, I, I've kind of been touching on it uh, throughout the segment, but I, I, one of my things that I usually try to do is just attack new challenges and never like never back down. Just trust in your abilities and uh, like and try to uh, get away with the nerves and just attack the. Good for you. And, and what about uh, is there a saying that kind of you could look at David Hayden and and uh, and the saying would fit? Uh, well, good saying that I like is uh, smooth waters don't make skillful sailors. They don't, huh? No. So you've been on some rough waters in your life, but you've uh, you're a skillful sailor. 
I'd like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coach, uh, as we end this, this particular uh, show, uh, thoughts on maybe what to expect from the Central Red Raiders? Well, hopefully you'll see an offense that can strike quickly. Uh, that you know, I, I think we've got a lot of playmakers uh, that we should be able to put some points on the board this year again, just like we did last year. Hopefully our defense does play better this year. Uh, and hopefully you see a, a close-knit group of, uh, of kids working together for a common goal. Uh, that's and, and that goal is the conference title. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we obviously have to take the steps to get there. You know, the city. We have the city games early in the in the, in the season. We got to take care of that. But we want to be in that mix at the, at the end of the season and hopefully make a run in the playoffs. And and I'm I'm confident you will have a good season. I I like the strength of the MVC. By the way, uh, one of the strengths in your program through the years, and I've said this shared this with you before. Ryan, Coach Bod, uh, Coach Colburn, Coach Degatano, you've you just have uh, you're blessed with good assistance. Yeah, football. absolutely. Uh, you, football is a, a sport where you can't do it by yourself. You've got to have good assistance. And uh, our group of guys, we, we spent a lot of hours last night game planning for uh, Eau Claire North. Uh, they're all hard workers. They're good communicators. Uh, they know what they're doing, uh, and I trust them a lot. Yeah. Well, we're going to be broadcasting the opening Central Red Raider game on Thursday as they uh, travel to uh, Eau Claire North. So it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We wish you the best during this season. We'll be at many of your games. Again, our guests today, Coach Service and Alec Morris, David Hayden from Central Red Raiders. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thanks for having us. We'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled the championship team. Who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For gold star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is our business. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Sports. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Central Football Head Coach Tony Service along with two seniors, Alec Morris and David Hayden. The Central Red Raiders loaded with talent and expecting a great season. Well, we begin our coverage of high school football this week as we travel on Thursday to Eau Claire, the Central Red Raiders versus the Eau Claire North Huskies. Then on Friday, we're back in Eau Claire for the Logan Rangers versus the Eau Claire Memorial Old Apes. Check your local listing as we continue to bring you Knights of Thunder Racing, a very popular show on Thursday at 7 and again on Sunday at 7 p.m. Next week, we continue our look at high school football with Logan head coach Casey Noble and two of his seniors. Well, thanks for joining us this week here on Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping you will have an active and a healthy week ahead.